Okay, so today's micro lesson is two ways to make a character compelling. There are many ways, um, and this is just two of them that will work for an existing character or a new character if you're starting from scratch. So um, if you're starting from scratch, as you know, as we, be we began this sprint, um, you choose a name, you choose a general age, um, and decide what you think your character's problem is going to be, um, and write that down. And then you think about, what do I want to say with this character? You may not have an answer at, that, at this point, and that's fine. Um, but if you've started writing something, if you've got a fair way through it, then you probably have some idea of what that character is meant to embody. Um, and so if you do, pursue that. You know, write it down. Um, this character is here because this character is a, my way of exploring X, Y, and Z. Um, and that will become your exploration into that particular thing will become your point about it. So um, if it isn't absolutely clear right now, that's fine. Um, so we have our character. We might have a sense of what we want to say. And then once we have that, we'll consider two things. The first thing is their voice. So strong character voice is something that sometimes if we're writing, if we have a situation or we have a, a particular problem in mind, or if we have a very strong other character, Sometimes, um, actually one of our writers uh, in the evening sprint has this right now, where the love interest is very clear, very dynamic, very um, charming and compelling. And the main character, who is the point of view character, um, is not very fleshed out at this point, which this is totally normal. You know, we come to stories from different angles. So not everything, of course, is going to be fleshed out right away. So if that's a situation that, that you come up with where you need to think about a particular character and you need to strengthen them and make them compelling, voice is one of the first places we can go to. So question number one is, does your character have a strong voice? And you will know that because either they do or they don't. Um, if you've already written them, then giving them a strong voice can be as simple as just turning up the dial on their frustration, turning up the dial on their opinions. Um, so, for example, maybe your character thinks, walks into a room and doesn't have a particular reaction to the room. That could be how you've written it. Well, maybe in your revision, you go back and you have the character walk in and say, oh, my God, it stinks in here. Or, oh, my God, it's, you know, it's stiflingly hot in here. I can't be in here. Whatever the situation is, then they're going to have a strong reaction to that. And characters who are having strong reactions are interesting because it tells us right away that there's conflict. So it could be as simple as just turning up the dial on their frustration, their opinions. You could give them a specific manner of speech, but maybe your character has, your character is going to say something to themselves when they get short-tempered, impatient, irritated, whatever that is. So, you know, one of our phrases in my house is, uh, dead nabbit, or, you know, <laughs> If you're English, it's a oh, bloody hell. Or, you know, if you if you're a Dorothy Parker fan, you might quote, "What fresh hell is this?" You know, these are all good old standbys. So you just need to take a few minutes to think about the phrases that your character uses, and what and how that is distinctive. So if that seems like a hard thing, if you're like, well. I have no clue how to go about that. One way you can approach it is to go to your bookshelf and you can pull off your bookshelf a couple of either short stories or novels that appeal to you. you use your intuition, just take off what jumps out at you, don't overthink it, open up the book and look and see who are the characters, how strong is their voice, why is it strong, you know, what words are they using, what's their attitude that's making them so distinctive. 
So that's one thing you can do. A second thing you can do, and this is my go-to. I do this. Um, we were talking earlier about novelty, and you would think that going to one book in particular would be a problem because there isn't enough novelty, but I never find that with this. This is Alan Bennett's The Complete Talking Heads. It's a series of monologues. It was written as plays, and when I read these stories, it opens the door to, it feels like all the characters I've ever heard like, and, you know, I, I do believe that our subconscious is full to bursting with characters and stories and voices, and yours is too. You know, you, you have been absorbing stories for just as long as I have, so we're full to busting with them, and we just have to sort of unlock the door and push it open. So if I need a voice, if I need a new character, I'll just open this up at random, and I'll flick through the pages, and I'll read it for a bit. And very often I'll start at the beginning of a story because there's a sort of a, a prelude, you know, it gives you, there's a like a summary, it gives you this character is a middle-aged man, the play is set in his bedroom, um, and then I'll look to see what the problem is in the first paragraph because it's short, they're short and succinct, so I'm going to get the problem, you know, pretty quickly. And then what happens is part of this whole sort of magical, grown-up magic fiction thing the characters that pop into my mind have nothing to do with his characters. Not his problems, not his setup, not his situation. It's literally a, just a way of opening it up. And if you want to see, um, I, I have a couple of free stories on um, Amazon. If you want to see how that inspiration sort of morphed into totally different characters, you can see it and you can you know judge for yourself this this is what the inspiration was and this is what the end product was and then you can do it yourself um so that's the complete talking heads by alan bennett i i love it to bits um give it a go and if you find that you have an example on your bookshelf then you know that can be your your default setting so that is number one number two is let's think about a secret that Oh, here's Laurel coming back in. Let's think about a secret that your character might have. So secrets, you know, when you we read about how to write a story and we read about give your character a secret and sometimes they're very sort of on the nose, you know, um, someone's stolen something or someone's uh, got, there's a family secret. It's a big sort of secret. And sometimes you need a novel to work that out. So in a short piece of fiction, or even in a piece of flash, your character may be keeping something from themselves. You know, your character might be, um, like we all do, refusing to see something. And perhaps that's where you might find your ending or the movement of your story. So, you know, a secret can be a crime. It can be something that your character did. It can be something that someone else in the story did and, and obviously is keeping secret. Um, and then it might be the revelation of that secret. The character may realize the thing that they've been hiding from themselves or it may be that the reader becomes aware of the secret and the character doesn't. So that's also an option. So these are two ways that you can make a character compelling, that you can beef them up. You know, very often we start writing a slice of life story and we're like, well, there's not really much going on in here. I need to, I need to do a little bit more. And so that's two ways of doing it.